Cycle Canada magazine, and this weekend is the third round in the Parts Canada Superbike Series for 2010, and I'm riding with the kids in the CBR 125 Series. And I missed qualifying, uh, actually qualifying was rained out, so they took practice times from the Thursday, but I wasn't here, so I'm starting at the back. So today was the first time I really got to see my lap times. And I'm about three and a half seconds off pole, which puts me about 20th of about 30 riders. The challenge in racing a CBR 125R is the lack of power. They only make about 12 horsepower on the series dynamometer. So what that means for riders uh, my, of my size, or full-size adults, we have about a 100-pound weight disadvantage against some of the kids we're riding against. Which means that unlike a full-size superbike, where if you have a bad line through a corner, you can compensate by using the throttle. Well, here there's no hope of that. So you have to run absolutely perfect lines from the apex to the rumble strips, and that's where CBR 125 is a great learning tool because it's like World Superbike, as I wrote once, with 95% less power. bike we're using is a Honda CBR 125R. It's a street bike sold here in Canada. You're allowed to make only the specified modifications. You can buy the bike from any dealership and then uh, you get the racing kit that goes with it. It's mandatory. It includes the uh, upper fairing, the lower fairing and the tailpiece and they come uh, pre-painted so it's real simple. The kit also includes a set of Pirelli race tires which will last the whole season no problem. Frame sliders to pe protect the bike in the event of a crash. Uh, an Elka racing shock, which is adjustable for spring preload and damping. On the other side of the bike, we have the race exhaust canister from Aero. And then there's also a B kit, which is optional. The B kit includes really beefy setback plates to get you a little bit more ground clearance with the stock pegs. Uh, and an optional countershaft sprocket, as well as a chain fin to uh, protect your fingers or toes in the event of a crash. You don't have to have a lot of experience either on the track or and building the bike. If you install the kit with regular tools and keep your bike clean, you're going to be doing just fine. We came up with the idea if we could have a motorcycle that was under $5,000 that uh, kids could race, you know, cheaply and, and, and sort of economically for the parents as well with, with minimal maintenance and so on, then it would, uh, you know, attract people to, to try racing and, and grow the grids. And of course, it's been three years now, and, and the, the series has doubled in size uh, every year. And we expect the final will have uh, 30 people in it, uh, which probably makes it the biggest grid here this weekend. So it's probably the biggest class of, of, of motorcycle racing here. We're kind of getting to that point now where the grid's as big as it can be for, for a single class. So we've developed a bit of a mentorship program where you know, we've taken the kids who are at the top of the 125 class each year and sort of encouraged them and supported them a little bit in their next transition into the amateur ranks. And right now that is into riding 600s. The idea being that as they generate or, or graduate from the 600 amateur ranks, they'll go into pro 600 and, you know, the series will sort of feed each other. A big part of this was to make people believe that a CBR125 or a 125cc bike, if you will, was a, an acceptable bike, meaning it was a cool bike, it was a fun bike, it was a bike you wouldn't be ashamed to be seen on. So the important thing was, you know, to sort of give it a bit of street credibility. And of course, as a sport bike, you know, nothing says credibility like racing. Because of the draft, you end up in packs, and so you can gain uh, positions and lose positions so quickly that you hardly know which way you're going sometimes and you think you're making a move on another rider but you've got two riders behind you making a move on you so it's a very peculiar situation because you really have no idea what's going on certainly the most fun I think is that is that it gives you a sense at a, at a speed that we can handle um, going eight riders into a corner or fanning out six of best at the end of the straightaway is a really wonderful feeling um, and it really is you do have to, to focus so intently and you really have to trust your instincts because it happens so quickly <laughs> We 
We just finished Saturday's CBR 125 race, and uh, I finished 16th. Uh, I was gridded 28th, uh, but there were some crashes in there, but uh, it was a decent finish. What was interesting is with the times, uh, when you get the printout for the end of a race, it has the best lap time. And I turned a faster lap than the kid who won. But I think what happened is those of us who were back in the pack held each other up at various times. But that one lap must have been a clear lap with a good toe from another rider in terms of the draft. So tomorrow's goal is to, uh, is to get up a little bit further. But it's been great fun. And uh, it's kind of a shame that it really is just for kids because they have enough fun. The track like Muspark, which is a really wide open flowing circuit, the draft is really important because the back straightaway is so long that it, it, you could check your email on one of these things while you're doing it. What you want to do is get close to the bike in front of you and what the first bike does, the lead bike punches a hole in the air and the second bike, which is hopefully your bike, goes into the draft and you get sucked up and what you want to do is just pop out of the draft and use that suction to blow you by the bike and that's one of the great things about this small capacity racing like this is that it happens at speeds that we can all actually do it. <laughs>